Welcome to the Soul Tribe Podcast. The Soul Tribe Podcast was created to help you navigate through the world of spirituality, wellness, and self-development in an easy, grounded, and relatable way. We break down everything from the Akashic Records, manifesting, spirituality, and so much more. We want to help expand your boundaries and bring the spiritual world to you in a fun and easy way. Get ready to be inspired with tips, tools, and easy-to-digest information. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Soul Tribe Podcast. Today, Lorraine and I want to talk a little bit about like taking another step into like that manifesting. It's like we're on a like a trilogy, like the manifesting trilogy here, because we just keep talking about this. But the idea is to kind of touch ground and look at it from another perspective of um, giving it over to the universe in a way. I guess I'll say it and we'll go, we'll get deeper into it. Um, So what I was thinking the other day is sometimes we think like, okay, this is what I want. And doesn't mean that's not what you want. You might actually really be connecting with what you want, but there might be a better option for you. Like maybe you deserve way more than that. Like maybe there's something else that's much more aligned for you that brings, you know, the synchronicity of amazingness for you. More joy. More joy. Or happiness, yeah. Or let's the same like let's say it's about a job. Maybe there's this other job that actually is much more aligned for you and it's the ambiance is better for you and the people that you'd be working with is better, but you were trying for the other kind of job, maybe. Or moving. Maybe you're thinking, well, I wanted to move here, but the universe is like, actually, I might place you over here, but there's a bunch of really, really cool people you're gonna be meeting up with over there, and like you never know what the universe is willing to give you. Yeah. And I think that's why we, in the other episode, we were like saying, I think that it's important when you say, okay, universe, I'm giving over you and not control the outcome. Because you don't know what the universe is willing to give you. Maybe it wants to give you something even more. Yeah. And then we have to always remember, depending on where we're at with our own self-esteem, our own beliefs in ourselves, our own limiting belief system, it might not be allowing us to connect to that desire fully to really dream big. And that's okay if you take it in baby steps, but sometimes the universe, you might be ready for something more. And you think, you know, that's happened to me with jobs, for example, like jobs being thrown at me. I'm like, oh my gosh, but I'm thinking about leaving Uruguay. Why would I take this job now? And actually it made my time there so much better. I connected with people, made new friends, actually enjoyed my time more than if I'd just been by myself at home. I started going to the gym again because I had money coming in. It was really interesting in that sense, but everything inside of my closed mind, like it was like, well, this is how I imagine it all. Like I'll get a job, I'll leave, but I'm not going to get a job now because I'm going to get stuck here. And then all these ideas in my head made me think that if I take it, then I'm giving up. And I remember dad always telling me like, keep looking for those jobs, wherever it is that you want to go, because it will happen. It just right now, the universe is giving you a little push a help. It doesn't mean you're giving up on your dream. It just might not be the path that we imagine it to be right. It might just look a little bit different. And Sometimes the universe has our back and it is holding us and helping us and, and supporting us in a different way. And that doesn't mean what we want isn't going to happen. It just might not happen in the way that we want it to happen or that we imagine it happening. But that's just our brain. That's our mind. That's not necessarily how it should happen. Yeah, that what you just said, like reminds me of when I tried to move to Mexico and then getting a job there and then the company ended up like as soon as I was able to like tie that down they said yeah okay all right all right yeah you can you can work you know the company here but you're the perfect profile for Cayman and so then I as soon as like that kind of came into fruition actually another option came into my face and um and I accepted it and like you know that was obviously the better option for me I don't know how things would have turned out if I stayed in Mexico with the company instead of going to Cayman, but I mean, thanks to me going there, you ended up going there, right? Like yeah. a bunch of stuff played out. Like just the fact that I made that decision is the reason why I'm able to even live in, in Holland right now. Yes. Like We just don't know why things happen the way they do sometimes, right? Yeah. Because for it's those magical. that don't know, I'm here. I have the rights to live here because of Aurora, who's English, an English citizen, because Cayman is... Um, 
an overseas territory of, of England. So, um, and then when I wanted to originally come here after leaving Cayman, I was trying to go to Scotland Mm-hmm. And I kept trying I to go to that. Scotland and like things kept, kept get, getting stuck and things kept happening. And, and then like the only option for the course I wanted to do, the only one that I was able to get into in the time that I needed to get into it ended up being, um, here. Yep. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that was the better option for me, but again, I don't know what, you know, you just don't so know mentally. What, yeah. Or like mentally you've been like, no, it's not working out. It's not happening. It's not what I want. But I'd be like, actually, wait, let me just sit here for a moment and see maybe I'm being redirected in an, another direction because what I do desire is still going to happen. It's just not the way I'm, maybe I'm getting fixated on something that might not be to my higher, like it might not be serving me to my higher, like good, right? We don't know. We don't know that. In hindsight, things make sense. But at the moment it's, I think when we're manifesting, we have to be careful not to sustain our ego, right? Yeah. And don't let like whatever like curve life is taking you down deterred and say, oh, it's not working. Like that's why I thought it was so important to talk about this and in in the, this next episode with like, like the sequel of the other ones because cause we talked about how well, like, okay, connecting with your true desire. Okay, now I know what I want. This is what I want. Like, I'm, I'm not putting myself under the limiting scenarios that I can't do this. I'm saying, this is what I want. I know I want this. Okay, I'm giving over to the universe. I'm taking whatever, like, initiatives I have to that I'm feeling like that's coming towards me. Like, oh, I need to go and do this now. I don't know why, but I just feel like I need to do it. It's like, let yourself, the synchronicity of life start bringing you down that path. And then maybe the universe goes, no, actually, this over here. And be open to whatever outcome it might be. Like visit that idea as a possibility because maybe that there's a reason for that. And maybe maybe that you will end up having that one thing that you wanted, but maybe you needed to go over here on this detour because it brings something else that you that you really deserve. I remember hearing when somebody was talking about manifesting, um, and they said, it's really important that you never tell the universe. For example, when you were trying to manifest money, be like, okay, universe, I want I want ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. And they say, don't ever put a limit and say, or, you know, a maximum or a limit and say, this is how much I want. Because now the universe is like, okay, fine. $10,000. I was going to give you a hundred K, but all right, fine. You only want 10. Here you go. Here's 10. So it's like, that's true. Or so, time limits, time restraints, right? That, that also, I need, this needs to happen in a year. What if it happens in a month? Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Time, time in our mind works a certain way, but in reality, time is completely different and things can shift in seconds, in minutes, in weeks, right? Yeah. So I think it's, it's funny giving it over to the universe and saying, this is my true desire and giving it over with that feeling of like, I know this is the most aligned thing for me and saying, okay, I know you got me. I'm going to follow your synchronicities and your signs and your messages. And then when things get blocked, I'm going to know that I'm moving energy or something that's supposed to happen is going to happen and don't lose faith in that. Um, Cause I think that's one of those catches yeah. us, right. And brings us down. And this is weird dance or balance that we need to find in that moment when we know what we want, we know what we desire. I think want is not even the word it's desire. Cause want, I can want a cookie, but I want it when I desire something, I think that's way more profound. That's more in our heart right? I desire something. When we know what we desire, I think there's an aspect of like, this is the balance I'm talking about. On one end, giving it up to the universe saying, this is what I desire. I know it's going to happen. I don't know how you're going to show it to me. But then I'm also on the other end, taking action steps. And we talked about blocks in a previous episode, right? Blocks and manifesting and, and all those things and shifting. But at the same time, it's I'm going to, I'm going to feel inspired in what I'm doing. I'm going to have to sometimes give myself tough love because maybe I'm not programmed in that way to take certain steps or do certain things, or I have to get out of my comfort zone for certain things. Right. But at the same time, it's like, where am I needing to create space? Cause that's something we were just talking about before we came on to, to chat about this. Where do I need to create space? If there's no space for what I'm desiring because something else is holding space, how am I going, how is that going to come in? A lot of times we'll feel even more blocked. That, that goes more in the topic of blocked, but you know, sometimes we have to make really tough decisions of things that we have to stop doing, new habits we need to create, 
um, new ways of doing things, letting go of people, places, things, you know, in a physical aspect, what I've done in the past is do like a ridiculous spring clean in my house and create space for new things to come in, in the physical form that feels so liberating. And that feels like it prepares you energetically to, to receive. And you can do that with that intention, right? We always talk about intention of the intention with what we do things with which we do things. And I think anything can become cleansing or we can let go of things even by just, I don't know, I'm just thinking like a letter from an old friend or from, from a past uh, partner and you being like, why am I holding on to this? Do I need this anymore? And creating space because maybe some of you are trying to bring in a new relationship or trying to create more connections with friendships or a new job. Like how can you start creating it? physical, emotional, mental space in your life. So we can bring that in with the desire, the desire that we have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And then like another thing is sometimes you're supposed to take action. Like, and this is a, this is something that bothers me. Cause I know, I know it happens to me. Like this is something that's specific to me. And I think that it might be to a lot of people as well. But for example, when I, I'm usually like, all right, um, this is what I want. And then you, the universe will like, yeah, I got your back. Right. Yeah. Okay. But well, like, show me, show like, for example, like when I wanted to like leave Cayman, the idea was I was going to sell my house, but it was like, I started setting that up and we put it up with like a real estate company and stuff like that. Um, and do you know when the, the interest showed like where the 1% ended up buying it was like, show me the house now and I want to buy it really so like it happened after I bought my flight okay yeah 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 you took the step like I had to buy the flight and I I, I'm I'm almost I'm almost like 99.99% sure that that house would have been sold if I hadn't bought that flight that's scary though but that's what I'm saying. I hate, I hate, this is something I hate. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. And for me, it's always that way. The universe like always ends up like, if you talk to like people that know me, they'll be like, Lucia somehow like she's fine. She always, somehow she figures it out. Like somehow it's because I take these crazy ass steps and the universe is like, okay, I was waiting for you to do it. Here you go. But the, the universe will not give it to you before I don't do that crazy step for some reason. Yeah. Like that's how I function. And it, it nags at me because sometimes I'll be like, no, I want that comfort, that financial comfort before I go there. I want this or that. I'm always like kind of waiting for that. And I'm like, Lucia, like in the back of my mind, I always talk to myself. It's like this little voice. It goes, Lucia, you know how this works. Mm -hmm. Do the crazy thing and the rest will come. And like, I'm like, no, I don't want to. (laughs) Yeah, of course. I think that's, you found that to be a good formula for you. And I do feel like that is the case for a lot of us. The moment we let go, sometimes like for me, when I was talking about that job that just came, they literally just, somebody called me. They're like, you want to come interview tomorrow? I'm like, and I remember I was in Uruguay at the time. This was in Uruguay. This was before coming here. And I remember telling dad, like, no, this isn't my plan. This isn't what I planned. Like what he's like, well, who cares? You're getting a job in the meantime and just have fun with it and don't stress yourself out. And it'll, it'll allow you to start saving some money before I'm like, This is a universe taking care of me, even though this isn't what in my mind I wanted. But I had to also get out of my comfort zone in that sense, because my fear was I'll get so I get comfortable in situations and then I stay in them too long. So you have to know yourself and know, okay, this isn't forever. Thank you, universe, for giving this to me. But this isn't the ultimate plan. The ultimate plan is this is setting me up so that I can leave. And it actually could look more desirable if I already have a job, if I'm looking for one. Like, that's just a reality. Um, but with you, I think it is interesting, this dynamic of like you trusting so much sometimes that you take these really incredible, incredibly scary steps that I don't think many of us could do or could take that ultimately end up helping you. They're not easy. Doesn't mean it's easy, right? Yeah, they're they're not not easy. No, they're not easy. And and once I make the decision, it's like, that's that's when it becomes easy in the sense that, like, there's no back. There's no way back. I made the decision. That's it. That, that, once I make that decision, that's when I can relax a little bit because I know that I can't go back from that. But most of the time I have half of the family calling me, messaging me, and emailing me, including you, (laughs) telling me that, 
I should be thinking about this. This isn't a good idea. <laughs> so it's like you have people constantly reminding you of how, of how bad it could possibly be to do that. And you're going, but I know I have to do it, but oh my God, no. But like, <laughs> it's like this back and forth. Um, and I always try to think back every time I try to do that. Um, I always think back to how I made that leap to Mexico. Like guys, yeah. like I went to Mexico and I had $500 in my pocket to my name. And I took a yeah. loan to pay for the course that I went to do. And I put, took a loan for, for the course I went to do that was like, I'm going to get a job in this after. That's not always the best way to go about things. But I think in that case, you no, had no, you I'm had just no saying, other option. Like, you, like, I was determined that I was going to do it and there was no other way. And then I ended up getting that job thanks to someone in the, de- one of the higher ups in the department in the company wanted a reading and found out that I did readings. Because she knew mm-hmm. a friend of mine by complete coincidence. I did a reading. Yeah. She loved the reading so much that she's like, I'm going to try to help you get a job here. It's amazing. It was meant to be. Exactly. But like, but you also didn't give up because when I, I remember your stories no, about yeah. it, you were like knocking on everybody's door, sending emails. You, were, you weren't taking no for an answer. And you were like, I'm going to figure this out. Where a lot of us, and this is me included, like, oh, they said no. Like, okay, I'll just give up now. No, like, no, heck no. Like, what else can I do? If this is really what I desire, then are there other steps? Maybe the way I was envisioning these steps to be taken aren't, isn't the correct way or isn't the way that's going to help me the most. Are there other things I can do? And, and constantly recalibrating and finding, finding your footing in that manifestation. Um, but yeah, it's never the best idea to spend money that you don't have, but I think sometimes we don't have a choice if if we want to go full in. And when we, and when we know that it's now or never, if I don't do this now, when will I be able to do this? Yeah. I just knew I had to do it. I knew there was no other option. And Lorena, I had so many blocks right before I left. Mom got really sick. I had already had my flight. I had already paid for the course. I had already gotten the loan and then mom got really sick. And then mom was mad at me for like not staying. And I'm like, I have to live my life. Like I, I have all this plan. Like I have, what am I going to do? And I, I knew that I knew that she was going to be okay. I know that she didn't know that, but for some reason I knew that. And, and so it's like, it was, it was every time I make a decision, some help like breaks over on the right side of me. And I have to go walk on the left side and be like, all right, hell breaking loose. Goodbye. (laughs) Yeah. It's It's not easy. It's not easy. They, they really, they really test me. Do you really want it? But no, do you really want it? Like how much do you think you deserve it? Here's this that, over here. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about that, yeah. right, in, in previous episodes. Like, a lot of, I think most of the time we will be tested in some way or another. Sometimes very difficult tests, sometimes medium, sometimes they might not feel so difficult because we might have worked through some of those things previously. And some of us in have a, in other specific karmic stuff where some of us exactly. might be more tested than others. I obviously have something going on karmically where I'm like, they're double checking all the time to see if I really... <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. But I think awareness is always so important in any of these processes of manifestation, because if we're aware where, where our struggles have been and when something's triggering us in that sense, we don't have to let it get us down in the same way that it used to. We can say, okay, let me just take, let me just take a step back from this and let me look at this from a different perspective and let me see if this is trying to teach me something. Is this trying to push me to, to really prove that this is really what I want and to work harder? Or is this trying to teach me not to give up like I've done in the past? We have to figure out, we have to really feel into that and be aware of the things in the past, but what's happening right now and what we really want. Because if we really want something, we're going we're gonna to get it. It's going to arrive. It's going to come to us. It doesn't always have to be easy, though. It's very individual. So I do think tuning into ourselves and being able to figure out what that means to us or for us, how it's serving us in some way and what it's teaching us, then we don't have to give up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There was, I was just thinking that that the the scenario that we talked about, like asking for, for example, money and not putting a number to it because maybe the universe is willing to give you more, but then you also have to listen to synchronicities and take the steps because maybe that, let's say that you're asking for 
this money to come in because you want to use it for something. And then you got an offer for a job, like you said, and that's not the one I was planning. But yeah, maybe that's the job that takes you to the next position or makes you meet someone that gives you that job that ends up somehow money comes in through. Like you never know how the universe is planning to like, you know, slide that in for you in a way. You never know. Like maybe even this has happened to me where I'm going to a job. I'm like, I hate this job. And then I end up meeting somebody and that helps me in the future. You just don't know. And that's why it's important to stay present with everything that we're experiencing because the more we can still be ourselves and still experience it in the best way possible and open up to whatever that is and to to people and experiences and situations, the more it can help serve us in the future or in the present. But if we're closed off to everything, no, this isn't what I wanted. I don't care about this. And then you just kind of go into it with like bad energy. Then how is it going ever going to serve you? And if it was going to serve you, maybe it won't now. And you're not learning your lesson. And sometimes a lot of us, I think this is myself included, is this lesson of letting go of how you imagine things to be or how you imagine things to happen and being able to flow a little bit more with things and say, okay, you know, this is what I desire. I'm going to trust. I'm going to let go. I'm going to stop trying to control things it's and so know that if it's going to, it's so hard, but it's a huge lesson for a lot of us because there is no con- control is ego. We can't control things. Well, all we can, all we can do is control in a sense, like I, I don't like using the word control, but we can take responsibility. That's a better word for our actions, how we perceive things, how we take things, you know, the perception of this is a lesson. Am I going to let this bring me down? Or am I going to just try to like go through the motions with this in a, in a positive way, learn what I need to from this and then get back up and keep going. You know, there's a lot, I mean, with manifesting for me, the amount of times I wanted to give up before coming here, like to me coming to Cayman was a huge manifestation. There's so many things I had to learn here and so many times I wanted to give up so many times. And I worked really hard. Yeah. I remember every day doing, you were like, yeah. Dad, until dad one day is like, what are you doing? Like, you're not looking for jobs anymore. I was like, keep, he's like, don't give up, keep going. And I think he kind of lit that fire back inside of me. And I was like, okay, he's right. Why am I? And that was always my fear. And that's what I always did. I get so sucked into the situations I was living that I wouldn't allow to, to myself to keep dreaming and pushing Look towards those things. Being, because, it's still there. Yeah. Like stuck there. Yeah. 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 And, and I would just that, fall back into that trap I'm over the and over around. again. The fear of staying where I am makes me go, no, 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 move, move, move. Let's go. Let's go. Like, like, like it makes me move faster. Like just, I yeah. stop to think about it for a second. And I'm like, I'm already taking action. I'm like, no, okay. Well, what do I gotta do? Like, that, I mean, that's, there's so much value in understanding how we manage situations and yeah. how we perceive them because then we don't, we, we we're less likely to fall into that trap that we always fall into, into that energy we always fall into and know, oh, this is just me repeating that pattern. Okay, cool. That's all right. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to look at it and be like, how can I better serve myself? Or break this And how this can time. I better, yeah. How can I break that? Even if it's just doing one different thing that day. Yeah. That's, you know, that day, instead of just sitting and moping, you're going to be like, all right, cool. Let me just, let me just check online if I can find this, this or that, right? What if I decide to send this email today? What if I reach out to this person to see if they, they, they can help me? Yeah. Those little things that can, that can, that can, that can make or break something. You know what I mean? I think that one of my biggest blocks, like maybe maybe someone else has something similar, but one of my biggest is like, I would use the word value. Like I deserve this. Mm -hmm. I'm worth that. Like that I'm worth that job or I'm worthy of that job. I'm worth um, I'm worth that much money. I'm, I'm worthy of ha- of living in this place or having this thing or like, I realize that sometimes I bring myself down and I, I don't think that I'm up to standards for that. Like, why do I deserve that? I have that a lot, a lot. And once I break it, there's no, no there's no going back. Like it's there. Of course. Yeah. But it's like, it takes me a lot. I could pass years without realizing, oh, this has happened to me for four years because I didn't realize that I was worth that. I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. It takes me so long sometimes to get there. We're, we're such individual and unique beings and we're all here to live such, and we always talk about the soul contracts and our lessons and why we're here. 
I think our relationships with manifesting and how we create and co-create with the universe is so different. We have to find our way of doing that. And I know there's so many people like, well, this is how you manifest and this is how you do it. I think there's so, it, it's so dynamic and it's so individual. I don't think there's a specific, or I think there's certain steps within formulas that can serve everybody in some way, but you're gonna have to find your way of using that and how you apply that to your life too. I think that's so individual <laughs> and you have to figure out what works for you. Like That's why no like the person you. teaching manifesting makes manifest a lot of money by selling their course, but the people that are taking the course usually don't get accomplished very much. It's because I, I think the same thing. I think we're all so particular and individual. And that's why, like I'll say for me, this is what happens, but I know that that is, I know that it's happened for everybody or it doesn't happen for everybody that yeah. way. And not only that, I think if I, cause I obviously have my Akashic records open. I think the main thing here isn't even, the process of manifesting, I think we all get stuck at the beginning, our worthiness, our blocks, our belief systems. And then once we can break through that, then we can start co-creating and manifesting. But also limiting what we want because that, that's what was yeah. the whole first thing we were talking about. It's like, okay, there's no limitations. There's no blockages. There's no issues. I can have anything I want. What is it that I really want? Like, I think that's the first thing because some of us will be like, let's say that you, your dream is to live in the mountains in a cabin, for example, you go, well, no, cause then, then, then I, have, I don't have a car and then I have to get a car and then I don't have a license, I have to get a license. And it's like, yeah. and then you're putting, no, maybe I can just get a house in the outskirts of, so you're limiting your dream already. Yeah. Right. And why can't you live in that cabin in the woods and have like an awesome truck that's like you know, four by four and that you have like all these other things that help you and that you're not, what if it, it was that way? So it's like, yeah, check to see what you really want without limitations. What is it you really want? There's no limitation. And I, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a big part of it that we're, we're, we're holding ourselves back because we don't think anything's possible, but that, that also goes back to what I just said, our own limitations of how we grew up, probably what our parents did, what, what their parents did, oh, or th thought they could do. Or I'm not so glad do. you said that, Lorena. I had this aha the other day, and I said, "Oh, I gotta talk about this on the podcast." And the other, so the other day, I was walking. I was I talked to myself in my head, like Lucia. Blah, 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 blah. That, what's new? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like I don't talk to myself out loud. Some people talk out loud. Like our grandma would do it out loud. Yeah. I talk to myself inside my head. Like I'll say things like, "No, we shouldn't do that. Maybe I should do this." No, but no, no. And so I was walking around the house and Aurora was in school. So I was alone in the house. And then I thought, oh, I would really like to do this, but no, because it's not convenient because I mean, I can't do both. I have to pick one. I said, no, wait, why can't I do both? And then I, th I literally like, screamed at myself in my head. I'm like, why can't I do both? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that saying, you can't eat your cake and eat it too. And I was like, that's mom and dad. That's BS. Yeah, that's that's BS. mom and dad. No, no, no. You can't have everything. And they'll say, what do you want? You want this or this? And I do that to Aurora. I say, Aurora, you want this or this? Oh, this one, oh, and this one. No, you can't have both. Aurora, pick one. And then so I do that to Aurora. So it's like a program I'm carrying from our, from our parents. And I'm like, no, I just did it to mm -hmm. myself. I do it to myself as well. I say, you can't do this and that. You got to pick one. And I say, I do, the two. I do that too. F that. I said, I'm throwing that out the window. We got to talk about this on the podcast. I'm like, I'm done with this stupid. I can't have my cake and I will eat it too. <laughs> I'll have five types of cake. I'm going to have velvet cake and I'm going to have, you know, like chocolate cake and I'm going to eat them all. Like whatever. Like it yeah. just like, it activated my brain and right away I was like, whoa, this isn't mine. Like, I just believe that to be true. And why am I, why do I have to believe that's true? Why does it have to gotta be true? Got to reprogram it. Got to yeah. reprogram that crap because otherwise it's going to keep limiting you. I'm glad you but said that. That's I where I was talking. And I remember. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we have to be very aware when these things. Like, if you're you're in that awareness energy, it doesn't have to be 24 seven because that's impossible. But you know, if you're doing your meditation, if you're doing your mindfulness every day, and being able to to find those moments during the day where you're like, whoa, I'm this is coming from a lack, a lack mentality. Why, why do I think I can only do this one thing or do it in this way? No, F that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do anything. I'm going to ask for anything I want. I'm going to work towards that. And it's not like, it's just like, poof, overnight it happens. It's you're gonna have to work towards it. You know, it's not just like I snap my fingers and it's going to happen. It's, that's the thing. Also, when we are totally connected to our desires, we're going to be more, um, we're going to be more in, inclined to do the work to get there. 
Because if we're not in our desire, then we're more easily also going to give up. So this is why we need to check ourselves constantly and reviewing like, okay, if I'm, I'm writing these things down and I like writing stuff down, you got, you know, as you guys know, I love lists. <laughs> so if I write all these things I want to manifest, but what if next month that changes? That's okay. Let me re, re like redirect it. I have Let's that problem that. all the time. I'm like, oh man, like I'll write down my desire list and my manifesting list. And then like a week later, there's things I want to scribble off. And That's I'm okay. Like, Oh man, I have to do this again. I like, think that's important to revisit it and, and, and we're constantly changing and we're realizing and maybe we're working through our belief systems or our limiting beliefs and then we realize, wow, this thing I wrote down last month wasn't coming from a desire. This is coming from a little bit of limiting thoughts here. So I think that's being in flow too. Or being you realize able to that re- that wasn't going to make you happy. Amen. Yeah, Totally. There's just so many moving pieces, I think, with all of this. <laughs> yeah. But if we can stay aware, like we were saying, and we can realize that sometimes things won't happen in the way that we imagine them to happen, then we're going to be more in that energy of flow. We're constantly redirecting. We're constantly taking action. We're constantly staying in this kind of aware energy and staying kind of high vibrational in that sense. Then nothing's stopping us. And something I always 100% believe in the Akashic Records always say to me, it's what's meant for you will never miss you. It might take longer or less. You don't know. But what's meant for you will not miss you. You might be holding yourself back a little bit with your, your, your belief systems or what you think you can achieve. But if it's meant for you, it's going to happen regardless. I truly believe that. Yeah. But I like what you said at one point, like, when we were talking about like what happens to me and what happens to you. And it's like knowing yourself. Right. And that's what happened. Like, I think that you have to figure out who you are and know yourself. And so for me, like that talking in my head thing, like I get, I, I wouldn't have picked up on that if I hadn't talked to myself that day. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's like, of course, get to know yourself, have conversations with yourself. Like, like I do it in my brain. Maybe you want to do like our grandma who like talks to herself all the time. Like we would out here. I talk to myself sometimes. <laughs> I hear like, it's just to like keep myself accountable or like remind myself of something. And if I say it out loud and I hear it, I feel like I remember it more or I, I becomes more aware of it, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going a little nuts. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes Probably sense. Not. Cause if you're saying it out loud, it's like you're confirming it and then you'll, you'll remember that you said that. Yeah, to especially yourself. when you're by yourself so many hours of the day working alone, it's like sometimes saying something out loud, it's like, Ooh, you kind of wake up a little bit. Right. Especially if you're saying it to yourself. I don't know. That's kind of my way of seeing it. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So you have to like, yeah, you have to like talk to yourself and figure out who you are. It's like be your own therapist. Yeah. Lucia, you're starting with that again. Don't do that. You know better than that. Like, you know, like talk to yourself. Talk, you talk, yeah. Talk to yourself. I think that could be really beneficial for some of us. I also feel like there's an essence of you actually, you're, you're sometimes you might be, it might be your brain talking to yourself, but I feel like sometimes the soul sneaks in there. Like, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I think it's a good way of channeling what a lot of people like to call intuition, which what I like to call it is soul information or your soul directly. Like it's your, it's your intuition is either your guide giving you nudges or your spiritual team giving you nudges or your soul literally giving, giving you information. Yeah. I'll do that in writing sometimes. Like if I journal or something, I'll like ask myself questions and then I'll answer and then I'll just sit with it for a bit and then I'll write stuff down. So it's kind of like I'm talking to myself. So that works for me too. Depends. And working through limiting beliefs that way too. It's like, is this really what I want? Is this really what I desire? Why do I feel like this is this way and not that way? Or why do I feel like I can't achieve this? What could be holding me back from that? Like when I think about making, like we have to make a decision, like, okay, something doesn't feel right anymore, right? And I, what I found that works for me is going, okay, what's, what scenarios of this doesn't make me happy? So this, 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 and this. And I, it's like, I don't, I'm not like you, I don't do a list. I do it in my head, right? I'm like this, 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 and I'm oh, I can't keep track in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, I'm very visual. So I'm like seeing it as I'm like listing oh, okay. it in a way. It's weird. Um, and then, and then I'll be like, and what happens if I don't change that? All those things will play out. No way. I don't want that. 
No. Mm -hmm. And every time I, I feel like, Oh no, like I feel iffy. Like, no, let's say we'll go back to like the job scenario where like, I don't like this job because it's too many hours. I hate the commute. I don't, I don't get a, my coworkers don't have the same vibration energies I do that I'm looking for. So those are the lists. Right. And then you'll be like, well, what happens? You'll think about leaving, right? Okay. I have to leave. I have to find something else. And then that maybe the fear kicks in of like thinking about not finding another job, for example. Yep. And then just what for me fixes it is I think I imagine myself in that scenario in three years, still there. And I go, oh, oh no, 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 no. And that fear is even bigger than the one of like not having another job, for example. And that kicks me into gear and goes, no, I'm, you know what? But for me, it functions different. Like I have to take the action of going to my boss and going, okay, I'm done with this job. It doesn't suit yeah. me. And then... It's like the universe will start the synchronicities of working with me and then that scenario comes in. That's how it works for me. But like I'll place myself in the scenario I hate and envision myself down that line in five years and go, no. And that like kicks me into like gear and go, no, I'm not letting that happen. I'm not, not on my watch. Like (laughs) the anxiety kicks in. Exactly. That's that. Yeah. I feel that. I felt that in the past. (laughs) Not good. Yeah. But yeah, we have to figure out our own way of doing things. And like you said, I think the big takeaway here for this episode is like a few things we just wanted to mention that kind of came up after we did the, the previous episodes was, you know, that things that we ask for or desire and we're putting out to the universe to co-create or manifest that it could change first because we're realizing that we've limited ourselves in what we've asked for or because the universe is redirecting us so that we can review that and, and ask for something bigger, maybe, or it's just not the way that we imagined it to be. Or it's, it's something coming, that we thought we wanted, but actually we, we realized that what really made us happy yeah. wasn't that one thing. It was what that one thing brought, for example. Yes, exactly. I love that. And, you know, there's, there's a whole thing that we need to think about with the ego with our own limiting beliefs, with our own healing that we need to make sure that we take into consideration with all this. And another aspect of clearing space and making space for those things that we're trying to bring in. And if there's no space, then it's going to be hard for it to come in in the way that we want it to, or even for it to come in at all. And that we do have more power than we think that we do in the day to day, right? And, and how you're, going about your life, the habits that you're creating, what you're letting go of, how you're interacting with your environment and the, in the steps you're taking to get to that thing that you're trying to create in your life. And I think looking at, at manifesting is not as in the physical, it's like you're creating, looking as a creation, like you're creating something like baking something. You're taking all these ingredients, all these parts, and you're bringing something to life, which in turn changes your energy because you're able to like in in the baking sense, you're eating something and it's giving you all this like dopamine. But in, in the actual physical sense, when you're co-creating with the universe and manifesting, it's, it's changing, it's changing your energy. It's changing everything. It's helping you interact differently with your environment too, because physical things are changing and you're seeing life differently. Yeah. You have a new perspective. Yeah. Perspective is everything, right? Yeah, I think perspective yeah. is everything, not limiting yourself, allowing yourself to really dream without limitations, but also at the same time, placing yourself, well, deprogramming and placing yourself in, in a scenario where you know that you value, you value yourself and you know that you're, wor- you, you're worth that. And then let yourself yeah. be guided down that path and take the steps that you feel that the universe is telling you so that it can take you to the scenario that's most, most convenient for you. Yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys know when it works for me. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to do more episodes on manifesting. It's just, I think as these ideas come in, we're, we're talking about them. Even talking we're both, about manifesting. We're both in phases of, yeah, of course. And we're in the phase of also co-creating and manifesting things. So we'll keep you guys also In the loop with that, of course, 100%. And I have a dog right next to me who is not being very quiet. So, (laughs) yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. And we'd love to hear from you guys if you guys have a formula or something that resonates with something that we said. Make sure to comment um, either on Instagram or Facebook, whatever you guys kind of resonate more with. 
And before we go, I also wanted to kind of mention, because this is the first episode since we've launched Level 2. Level 2 is launched. Finally. We have it up. <laughs> um, we launched it on Friday, the 20th of May. And um, yeah, we're really excited. We hope you guys I feel like we gave um, birth to a resonate with it. <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels like it was like this whole like birthing, pro- well, yeah. like pregnancy and birthing probably. Yeah. Um, but we're really excited for you guys to have access to that. So we'll put the link for the course below. And yeah, any questions you guys have, you can email us at soultribeacademy at gmail.com. And we're excited for like passing this information on to you all. And for this also to might maybe be a viable like business for some of you. I think for us, it's been really an amazing journey and it's something that we don't consider it work, but it, it is kind but of without work, it, we wouldn't know? even have this podcast. So it's no, it's, exactly. It's, it's our everything at this point. And at the same time, it's fulfilling us. It's helping. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, I always talk about it in that sense, but yeah, any questions or anything, we'll put the link below and uh, we'll keep you guys posted on any updates. Right now, it's at a promotional price. The price will be going up on the 20th of June. So if you do do want to check it out, we would suggest you doing it sooner than later because the price will be going up. So There's just a reminder that I'm still uh, releasing episodes of Book Talk. Yes, Book Talk. YouTube. Oh, so right. It's on YouTube because you guys can see my face. You can see me talking to you. So they're videos. So, uh, they're up there. Um, so the second episode came out this week and I have another episode coming out next week and I'm still reading. So I plan on continuing to do videos. So don't miss those. Cause it's like a Akashic Records perspective on the books I'm reading and visiting whatever I find out in the book. So it's fun for me and hopefully it's fun for you guys too. Yeah, and it's helping too. People can get like a rundown of the book before they read it, or if they don't want to read it, they don't have time to read it. You're already giving them info, right? I think yeah. that's cool. Some books are easier to talk about than others because some are like you, you have to be careful with the spoiler alert, and other yeah. books are much easier. Like uh, I just finished recording for next week the Dolores Cannon one, and that's easier nice. because it's like a hypno- hypnosis session. So it's like you there's not a lot of like spoiling you can really do because you you can't get the essence of the whole book until you read it. But I talk about subjects that she ends up like discovering and talking about. So it's easier to talk about those. Yeah, I'll put the link to the playlist. So the Book Talk playlist on YouTube. I'll put that on the show notes so you guys can check it out. And uh, yeah, we will sign off now. And we will see you guys next week for a brand new episode. If there's any, obviously, like we always say, if there's any suggestions you guys want us to talk about anything specific, maybe even around manifesting or anything else, feel free to email us at soultribepodcast at gmail.com and we will definitely take that into consideration. Or you can comment on this episode or just send us a DM on Instagram or Facebook too. We love you guys. We will see you next week and have a great week and happy manifesting. Bye guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.